Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to share this special message with you. Now, my co-host Michelle and I love masterminds. Not only do we belong to masterminds, but we also host a mastermind. We started it almost eight years ago, and it is the premier mastermind for women business owners who want to grow their business with a specific focus on marketing. Now, this group is usually completely booked out, and very occasionally we open the doors and invite a handful of women in. So if you're growing your business, but you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an amazing time together and the women in the group are extraordinary. They're great cheerleaders, supporters, advisors and colleagues for you. And they're also seeing extraordinary results. We see people cracking the million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar mark, launching new e-commerce sites that go from zero to ten thousand dollars a month in sales. They're doubling their conversion rates, they're growing memberships, they're selling courses, they're growing their personal brands, and they're getting all kinds of media exposure and speaking opportunities and so much more. You can learn more about the mastermind and join the wait list over at herbusinessmastermind.com. We're going to open the doors soon, so you definitely want to be on the list to get an invitation. So head on over to herbusinessmastermind.com. You're listening to the Content Sales Podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your idle clients. Welcome to episode 219. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co-host, Michelle Falzon. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hey, Susie. I'm great, thank you. It is always a good day when I get to hang out with you and talk <laughs> content marketing. <laughs> likewise, likewise. And today we're covering a topic that really makes such a massive difference to your results. And that topic is getting more referrals. And I'm surprised with 219 episodes that this isn't a topic that we've covered in as much depth as we're going to do today. And so uh, we all love a good referral. Um, And usually it's something that I know happens organically for most of us. But in today's show, we're going to be covering six specific things that you can do to really cultivate and systemize your content marketing to actually encourage more referrals on a regular basis, to really make it part of your marketing plan. Mm, Right. And here's why this is important. According to a study by Nielsen, people are 90% more likely to trust and buy from a brand Mm. recommended by a friend. 90%, like that's not a little number. Mm. Mm. (laughs) That is a massive number. And I know Mm. that, Susie, to be true with my own life. In fact, um, just yesterday I was talking to a friend. I'm traveling to Maui a little later in the year. And and while I've been to Hawaii a number of times before, especially for the fantastic reach retreat that her business puts on, I've never actually been to to Maui. And so a friend who used to live there gave me several recommendations and she referred me to some specific restaurants, uh, a particular accommodation on a certain part of the island. And I just went with those referrals. Like I didn't do other research because I trust her. She and I have a similar approach to travel. I know if she likes it, I'm going to like it. I'm really busy right now. I didn't have the time to mess around trying to learn everything there is to know about Maui and make those decisions by myself. So I just went great. I'm just going to run with that. I love that. Two thoughts came to mind. One was the friend Oprah and two, oh, <laughs> and wish. two, maybe you're going to stay at the White Lotus Hotel. <laughs> oh, I'll have to ask my friend if this is the White Lotus Hotel. <laughs> uh, no, I love what you said there. And that I find that for myself as well. It's such a great shortcut. And when you can trust the person who's referring, I just then don't have to go do the research, like you said. Um, we recently ran our business growth summit for women entrepreneurs, and we had almost 2,000 women uh, join us. And when I was organizing it, I was looking for a couple of great speakers to include in our fantastic lineup. And I was able to get uh, referred to a couple of best selling authors who had books that were just recently out, and they were really up for the idea of being a part of the summit and getting their message out to our incredible community. And their presentations added a whole lot of value to the women who came along. And so I just appreciated, you know, having a great connection network, it makes it easy to get referrals. And I know we'll talk a bit more about that later on. Right. And, and you know, not only kind of getting the leads coming your way, but with that tendency that like, okay, if Susie's told me that this is a great place to stay, or this is a great accountant, or this is a great interior designer, um, I'm just going to go ahead and buy from them. 
So mm. the sale, the actual conversion is so much easier. So if you're listening right now and you've ever received a great referral, perhaps you can relate. So even for a high ticket or highly complex kinds of sales, like maybe you sell consulting on a very kind of complex topic, or you have a technology offering, or even perhaps even a large product purchase, like a car or a house, if you're a real estate Mm. agent, for example, converting those warm referrals to those really valuable customers is usually like a billion, million, gazillion times easier uh, than a, a cold referral. Okay, like maybe maybe a billion times over is overstating it, but it's like a lot easier, right? Absolutely. And, and like we find that members of the Her Business Network are often referring other people to join us and it makes it practically effortless. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to speak to anybody. I don't have to convince anyone. Um, and they come in and they're a really good fit because they're likely to be someone like the customer that I already have and love uh, because they're referring someone who um, who is like them. And because they love what we do so much, they kind of do the selling for us. And I appreciate that so much. Yeah. I love that point you're making about like getting the same kinds of customers too, because, um, you know, we do hang out with people like mm-hmm. us. And so mm-hmm. you can sort of tap into a whole sort of seam of people uh, by finding just one person in that sort of network. Um, you know, part of what I do in my business is strategic marketing consulting. I do a little bit of it. I work with just a few clients a year in a deep way and they all come via referral. Mm-hmm. You know, I know if client A has referred referred someone to me, there's a very good chance that that new client has a lot of the same characteristics as client A, you know. And Mm. if I like working with client A and if their business is the type and size of business that I like working with, chances are that that referred client is going to be in that sweet spot as well. So it's kind of like this double whammy. It gets, it's a much easier sales process, much easier. Yes. And it's also a greater chance that the referral is going to be your ideal kind of customer. Mm. I totally agree. And, um, What I know is that there's actually um, research, like you cited earlier, that kind of backs what we're saying here today. And one of the statistics that I think is particularly compelling when it comes to making the case for why you might want to invest in proactively setting up some systems and processes to get more referrals is this one. Um, There's an advertising industry publication called Adweek, and they found that 74% of people refer to word of mouth as their main um, path to sale. So that means that 74% or close to three quarters of people in your market right now, word of mouth is the way that they're going to find you. And if you're in a business to business market, um, whether you sell software or um, whatever you do, that might be business to business. What they found is that 84% of business to business decisions, this is really interesting, start Mm. with a referral. Yeah. Right? Even more than business to consumer. So 84% of business to business decisions. So if you have a business to business kind of business, then you really want to be listening up. So that's really amazing because we know that referrals work and not only do they get you clients, but a great referral also likely means that a customer is going to spend more with you and be more profitable. Now, I've got a few more stats because we're making the case here. (laughs) So listen up. So the Wharton School of Business found that the churn rate, so the rate at which people left, is 18% lower than other marketing channels. So that means that customers stay with you longer when they've been referred by other people they they know. Um, They also found that the lifetime value of a customer is 16% higher, which means those people not only do they stay longer, but they spend more with you. The two are kind of interrelated. McKinsey and Co, they found that word of mouth generates more than twice the sales of paid advertising in some industries. So you might be out there buying ads where right now you could have a really great word of mouth system that's going to do much better for you. And another statistic that we want to share is Deloitte. They discovered that referred customers have a 37% higher probability of making another purchase than non-referred customers. Isn't that mm. fascinating? So many good reasons to um, bring in people by the method of referral. So these are all factors that contribute to making referred customers more profitable for you um, as well. That's all I'm going to say yeah. about that. Yeah, look, these are incredible stats. And, you know, when you hear the numbers, you'd think the entire world 
will be doing everything they could to double down on getting more referrals. But here's the weird thing. Despite how incredibly effective they are, it's decidedly really an underutilised strategy, I think, Susie, you know. Mm. And um, there's a software firm and they're called Influitive and they found that only 30% of B2B companies have some sort of referral program in place. And another institute, the Carnegie Organization, <laughs> that 91% of customers say they'd give a referral, but only 11% of salespeople ask for them. Mm, interesting. You know? And so there's this interesting picture kind of being painted by these stats we're sharing. And I know we're kind of just rattled off a lot of numbers, but it's really about identifying that there's kind of this big gap between what's possible for those people that do really find a way to get referrals, they've got more profitable, more longer-term customers, the sale is easier, and what's actually happening, which is that while we've got people who might be happy to refer, we're not asking them for the referral. We're not putting any sort of referral Mm. program in place or having any energy directed towards that. And so we wanted to help you think about referrals today. And we're really kind of just kind of, it's the tip of the iceberg really what we're going to cover today. But the intention here is to get your mind thinking about how the heck can I get more referrals in my business? And not in a way that's too cumbersome or complex, because here's the thing. I don't know about you, Susie, but I've seen a lot of referral and affiliate type Hmm. programs fail because they're just too hard for you or for the referrer, or they miss the mark with the reward or the, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong with them. Um, So we've got a few simple ideas today, doable ideas that you can implement right away, whether you're in B2B, B2C, whether you sell high ticket, low ticket, we're just going to talk about a couple of ideas that we hope just get your juices flowing and get you thinking about referrals. Mm. We sure do. And we've actually divided these ideas into two main categories. The first category is how to get referrals from existing customers. And the second is how to get referrals from referral partners. So other organizations that will help you sell your thing by referring you. Now, the first of those categories, getting referrals from customers, is pretty self-explanatory, right? How can you get the people already buying from you to tell people that they know about you and start referring you to their products, to your referring to your products and services. So maybe you're already doing a few things in this area, or maybe you've thought about it. And while that's often on a one-on-one basis, so one customer refers one of their friends or colleagues, there's a second category that I mentioned, which is how to get referrals from referral partners. And this is about finding referrers who will refer more than one person to you. So for example, if you're a mortgage broker, then a local real estate agent could be a fantastic referrer for you. One great relationship with one great real estate agent could result in literally dozens of referrals for you every quarter. So let's dig into the first category, which is giving, um, getting referrals from existing customers. So people who are already buying from you. And we've got three tips for you today to help you get more referrals from those clients. So the first is to actively ask for the referral. And we heard in the stats earlier that often there's referrals there to be gotten if we're just asking. And so while it might sound obvious, um, What we've seen with the stats that Michelle just shared is that the majority of us are just not even asking for the referral. Yeah, it's so right, Susie. And there are a few really easy things you can do right now to ask for those referrals. And the first thing is just to build it into your delivery process. So however it is that you hand over whatever it is you do. So um, is it handing over the keys to the house that somebody's just bought from you? Is it when your customer comes in and collects the birthday cake they ordered from you or when they sign off on their new website or they get their login details to um, some software that you've created for them or whatever it is, that point, that point of delivery, which we um, often refer to as like that thank you point, the thank you moment, is one of the ideal sort of trigger points to ask for a referral. And you want to ask for the referral as soon as possible after that moment. So you don't like go, hey, here's the keys to your house. Now, can you please refer a customer to me? You want to, you want that moment to breathe, to have its moment for the client to really celebrate receiving whatever it is from you. But soon after that, you want to say, um, hey, you know, uh, I hope everything's going great with the house. I'd love to help any of your other friends who might be looking for a house right now. Um, is there anyone you'd think about referring to me right now? Now, this can be a simple informal request, like a follow-up call or a follow-up email. 
it could be part of the wrap up process. So if you have like, uh, if you deliver a solar, for example, and there's a final handover where you train your client on, you know, how to read their meter and where the phone number is to call you if they need help and what buttons to press and things like that, they may sign off on something on site. Then you could actually have something built into that process where on the bottom of the form is a space for them to refer somebody to you, or it could be in some sort of post-delivery checkup. It could be in a post-service questionnaire or survey that you send, and you're asking them a couple of questions. And one of those questions is, do you have anyone or can you refer anyone to us right now who might need the same sort of help we gave you? So thinking about those things is really important where are the points in my service where I'm delivering, where the client's the most grateful to me, the most happy, I've got the most sort of cachet with that client, when and how soon after that might I be able to reach out for a referral and and what's going to be the easiest way to just get that done? Mm. There's actually an author we've mentioned a number of times on the show over the last 219 episodes, and that is Dr. Robert Cialdini. And in his book, um, Influence, he actually talks about how we can bungle away the opportunity to ask for a favor when someone is, we've just served someone and they're happy with what we've done and they invite us almost to reciprocate. And so um, while you don't want to jump in too soon, what you do want to do is wait for that opportunity where someone might say something like, thank you so much. If there's anything I could ever do for you, (laughs) right? That's an invitation. You may not pounce right there, but you do want to take that opportunity to say, hey, you know what? You mentioned that and I would really love it if you would, you know, refer this person. The key is to have a system, which is what Michelle is saying. So you, if you have a delivery checklist, add this to your checklist of here's the things we do when we deliver our services or products to a client. If you handle the customer interactions as a consultant and you work on just a few projects a year, like Michelle said she does, well, make sure that you have a calendar reminder or build something into your final delivery process to remember to ask for the referral. Uh, and that's this symptom symptom that system needs to extend to what you do with the referral when you get it so you don't want to just have a system for getting the referral and you don't want to sit there in digital land you want to be able to then do something with it so it's important to have a clear and easy way for people to one send you the referral so do you want them to email it to you if so what email address or fill out an online form and if so what's the link to that form do you want them to send an introduction to introduce you to the other person? Are you going to give them a coupon code that they can extend to their friend? Like just think through the system and it doesn't have to be complex. In fact, the simpler you do it as you're starting out, the easier it's going to be. And like Michelle hinted earlier, some referral systems are just way too complicated and you want to make it super easy for people to give you those referrals. And then when you do get the referral, you want to act immediately. You want to follow that person up um, who was referred to you as quickly as possible. You want to mention who referred them, right, so that you can make that connection. You can sort of leverage that relationship that is there and you want to move them to the next step. So whether that's having a call with them, setting up a meeting, setting up a time to show them a demonstration, giving them a trial or whatever it is that makes sense for your product or service for you to move them towards being a buyer. Mm -hmm. It's great advice. And I would add that, especially if you sell uh, like a higher dollar service, if these referrals are worth quite a bit to you, like perhaps it's a kind of consulting or you build websites or you do, you know, expensive dentistry (laughs) as an example, you also want to keep your referrer in the loop. And uh, something I I get referrals often, I kind of always work with all the referrals that I get, but uh, if it's, if it's a referral that I really respect and admire, I'll Uh, I'll always speak to the person that they've referred to me. And what I tend to do is on that first acknowledgement that you said, Susie, which was so right, like, you know, you want to act as quickly as possible. You want to, first impressions really matter. I usually, people would often just email me and say, hey, Michelle, I was talking to so-and-so and and I've copied them on this email and et cetera, et cetera. I'll reply and say, um, you know, hi, Kathy, great to meet you. Susie, thanks so much for the referral. I'm moving you to BCC. And what that means is in the reply message, I've put Susie's email address, if she was my referrer, in as the blind copy in the BCC section of the email. And so what that means is when people hit reply, 
that Susie's not going to get all the ongoing messages. So she's right. going to hear like the 50 million back and forth. So I'm trying to set up a meeting on Thursday with this client, but she can see that I've, I've reached out, I've closed the loop for her. And then what I will do is whether that turns into a project or not, I will go back to that person. So I say, hey, I met with so-and-so. They've got a great business. I've helped them out with this, this, and this. It's probably not the right project for me right now, but I've referred them to so-and-so or I'm going to take care of them and answer a few of their questions once they've got this or that in place. Or, hey, thank you so much. That's like the perfect client for me. Looks like we're going to do uh, some work together. Thank you so much. Uh, And here's what we're doing next. And so just keeping them in the loop is a great way to take care of these relationships because they need to Mm. know that you're going to look after the people they refer because their own ego is on the line. I know when I refer people, my ego is on the line. Like I I don't want that person that I've referred to think, well, Michelle doesn't have good contacts. Do you know what I mean? I want want to know the people that I refer my clients to that um, they're really going to take care of those people. So the more you can assure your referrers that you're going to do the right thing, that you're going to take care of their people, the more confident they're going to feel, the less vulnerable they're going to feel referring to you. And like I said, especially if that client turns into a sale, you want to have a process for letting them know. You may also want a process for sending a gift. So, uh, you know, especially for those higher dollar transactions, you may want to send a gift basket or a bunch of flowers. Or I remember once I referred uh, a friend of mine to my dentist and she had to have like $25,000 worth of dentistry done. And so they sent me uh, some gold class movie tickets and things like that. So you're going to say gold tea. Oh. <laughs> sent me a gold bullion. Uh, no, just some gold class movie tickets. But it was a lovely thought, right? And and it's kind of so interesting though because, you know, I wasn't motivated to do it for any reward. And when, sometimes when I get a reward for those things, I feel a little bit funny. But um, I was doing it because he'd done such a great job for me and I wanted to really take care of my friend. And so I knew that she had this big thing she was very concerned about and I knew he would take care of her. Now, for smaller dollar transactions, it might not be a $25,000 dentistry referral. Um, You may not need to do that. You may Mm. not need to send gifts. You may not need to do personal outreach and keep people up to date on the project, but you could still send one note of thanks, or you could even automate that part of the process or tag that person on a social media post or whatever might be appropriate to kind of close the loop, to acknowledge, to be grateful. And I find it never Mm. like it never not pays to be grateful. It never not pays to acknowledge people and thank people and, um, you know, just be super respectful. I totally agree. And keeping in the loop, acknowledging them, even if it didn't turn out, mm. you know, just showing gratitude for someone having referred you and um, giving them the opportunity to want to do that again. But mm. on that point uh, that you were making about sending gifts and rewarding clients, I think this is a tricky one. And we were just talking with one of our mastermind members about this today. So she has about 200 past students of her group coaching program. And she was wondering if a formal affiliate program where each customer gets a financial kickback or reward for every referral they send was something that she should be looking at as she moves into her next promotion. And our advice was that a formal paid affiliate type of arrangement, especially with a small cohort, um, can be more work than it's worth. But having said that, referrals and word of mouth is a golden strategy. So if you have a small group or of current and past customers, we'd be more inclined to suggest that you test a few different ways of engaging and exciting your graduates, your alumni to share the offer with friends and colleagues that didn't require a lot of tech and automation um, because a formal program can take you a lot of time to set up and require quite a bit of technology and automation so that you're traffic tracking things. And what I found also, Michelle, is most people, especially graduates of our you know, past clients, they're not usually doing it for the money. You know, the right. people that do it because they want to earn the commissions are usually businesses who part of their income stream is that they earn affiliate commissions. And, you know, us as a business, there's only a couple of times a year where we'll do it, where we'll promote a course that we think is really relevant to our clients and that we'll earn a commission about that. But otherwise, um, mostly, you know, when members are referring other members, they're doing it because they want more people like them in the community. They want to support me. They want to acknowledge that they, um, you know, they're getting gay. Um, But I do want to give uh, an example for this example we were just sharing, and that is, you know, maybe our client could give her friends a special link and even a special deal, a discount. 
because they're a graduate of the program, they're extending that discount. Or someone perhaps that's used your consulting services or purchased from you before um, could get some sort of special link so that the friend can look really good to their friends and, um, you know, even a few dollars off sometimes can be a motivation to say yes mm. to a situation. You could do also if you had this group, you know, group of clients, you could do a call when you brought all your graduates on, you give, gave them some sort of amazing value, but then you also spelt out how this opportunity to bring a friend along works. And so if you have a Facebook group, you could post in there about the opportunity. Um, you could do personal outreach to a few power users. So there might be a few people in her coaching program who are really, you know, they're big influencers. They have their own big audiences. They have big networks. You would do something different for them than the average person who perhaps has taken up your services. And so you could supply some really simple resources. So when we did our business growth summit, we, um, none of the speakers were required to promote the summit. It's a free summit. It was a really, really great value, but we did give them all um, a link to the event, we gave them some imagery, we gave them some copy and said, hey, we would love it if you would support this because you're part of this. And we thought, we'll just see how it goes. And it's been fantastic. They've all been wanting to, because they've been really pleased to be part of this program, they've all been sharing it. Now, I'm sure they would share it equally if it was a paid program. Um, and here's the thing, if what you do when you test out these ideas, get some traction, then maybe you do something a little more formal, but don't go investing in automation and um, technology and lots of branding and marketing and all that sort of thing until you've tried out some low hanging fruit strategies. Yeah, I so agree with that. You know, you want to grow into some sort of more formal affiliate program. It's very rare that you'll get it right, right out of the gate. Uh, and we can overestimate too. We might think, oh, I've got 200 students. If each of them referred a customer to me every month, that's 200 customers a month, but that's not going to be the <laughs> rate. You, know? <laughs> you might get a couple of referrals in that, in that month, you know? So <clears throat> I really loved what you were saying there. And, and it, you know, it's back to what I was saying about, you know, when the dentist sent me the gold class tickets, a part of me felt a little weird. It's like really understanding the motivation for why people would refer, I think is really an important key to having a successful customer referral program. And Susie mentioned, you know, it's, I know how much Susie's, her business community absolutely adores her and wants to support her. And I know how much they love having a thriving, strong network to be part of. So their kickback, their payback for referring somebody is they get to do something for a mentor that they love. They get to bring their colleagues into a network where they can perhaps get more value from those colleagues inside the network versus outside the network. So they're getting this sort of innate value. So you want to really understand what is the value that my customers are going to get. Now, if you sell something that's relatively high dollar. So let's say uh, like the program we we're just talking about for our masterminder, it's in the thousands of dollars. Um, then, you know, that kind of like, uh, let's do a call, let's get together, let's kind of reach out to those power users. A lot of that works really well for um, those small groups of people in higher dollar programs where each sale is going to be worth quite a bit to you. If you sell something that's relatively low dollar, you could look at giving customers uh, some kind of incentive that's relevant still to their innate desires to share a link with friends. So you might not do the call, you might not have uh, you know some of the bespoke outreach, but you might just send uh, an email and say, hey, here's a link. I'd love it if you just share this with your friends. And this is especially good for e-commerce businesses. Uh, and we've got people inside our mastermind I'm thinking of right now, uh, someone who sells hairbrushes, somebody who sells um, beads you know, and maybe you've seen those options too, when you buy something online and on that order confirmation page, they offer you a percentage mm. discount or a $50 voucher. If you share that link mm. with your friends and then somebody comes back and buys using that link. Now that can be a great strategy where you've determined that the innate need, the thing that would motivate somebody is a discount or is a bit of a price break or is a little bit of money towards their next sale. And there are a number of tools that can automate that for you that are relatively simple. Um, and they've got relatively reasonable subscription fees like uh, Referral Factory, Friend Buy, Hello Referrals. There's a few tools like that. And we'll put a link to a list of those tools 
in today's show notes for you if you're somebody who perhaps has an e-commerce site or has a low dollar something that you think, look, I'd love to just have a simple way to automate this so people can just grab a link and I can just have it there sitting there opportunistically like a line in the water every time somebody buys from me. But again, the reality is you do need volume to do that. Um, To start with, you could just publish a special coupon code or create an email that gets sent to people after they buy from you. You don't have to have all these tools and plugins working right away. You could create a simple web page where um, people, after they've bought from you, you can send them there and say a few explainers about how they might get a discount or how they can refer their friends. The important thing is to look at where and when, just like Susie said, you can ask for referrals from your existing customers. And we mean actively ask them to tell their friends and their networks about you. So like that stat we quoted earlier, most of your cup customers would be happy to do it. They're just not likely to think of doing it proactively on their own. Hmm. And so this is kind of a sideways uh, thing, but, you know, this is about being in front of your customers more. Hmm. So if you're not appearing in their inbox, if you're not showing up in their feed, you're not going to be top of mind. But if you can be top of mind and ask, that's going to, you know, double, triple, quadruple your chances of them even referring you. Our next simple and very doable step for getting more referrals from existing customers is simply to add a referral link and instructions to the footer of all your emails. So that goes back to my point about showing up in front of your customers. Even when someone's bought from you, that's not the reason to stop being in contact with them. You want to continue to be in contact with them. And every time you message your customers, they're going to see that prompt. Super easy to do. Um, you can also take that same copy and put it on your website somewhere your customers are visiting or any other correspondence you might send. So you might do a monthly report, you might do a newsletter, you might do some sort of status update. Just be sure to ask every time, right? It's no skin off your nose and nobody's going to say, oh my gosh, she keeps asking because you're thinking of it, you're overthinking it likely. So just each time you message your customers, make sure that you make an ask. Love it. Uh, And our final quick tip for getting more referrals from your existing customers, this one's going to apply if you have other people on your team who are perhaps working face-to-face with your customers. And remember we quoted that stat earlier where, you know, most of your customers will give you a referral, but only about 11% of salespeople actually ask for the referral. So how do we incentivize our team if they're the ones out there doing the sales meetings, on-site, handling the installation, handling the person coming into your store when you're not there or when you're working with somebody else. And this idea is is to not just train your team about what we've just said, proactively asking for referrals and exactly when and how to do that, but also to reward your team for those referrals. So let's just say you have a a business, you're, um, you're in trade, for example, maybe you do electrical services and you really want your tradespeople to ask for the referral when they go out and do the final kind of inspection on the job or whatever. You want to train those people how to ask for the referral. You might want to build it into your system, like the form they sign off, like we were saying earlier. But you also might want to kind of have a little healthy competition amongst all of your tradespeople. Maybe you've got a team of three or four people or 10 or 20 people. Get a notice board up in the main part of your office and keep a tally of who is winning on referrals um, offer a small cash bonus for each referral that they get. And maybe there's a bigger prize for the winner of the most referrals in that month or that quarter. Now, whatever works for you, you might mm. have physical premises where everybody's together. You might be able to keep it in a little Slack channel that you just keep updating um, or in a virtual team meeting. It might be one of your agenda items. But just like Susie was saying, keeping yourself top of mind in front of your customers with those referral opportunities If your team is also a way for you to get those referrals from your customers, how do you keep this reminder in front of your team? Not just with the training and the setup and the systems, which is definitely going to help, but with reminding them about it, with making them incentivized in some way to think about referrals, to think about how they can invite your existing customers to refer more of their friends. Mm. I love that idea about the teams. I can just see some bit for some businesses that would be so perfect because yeah. there is going to be that competition and people wanting to to win that monthly prize or that, you know, 
gold class tickets, you know, whatever yeah. it might be. But the main idea is to build it into your culture and mindset and make the numbers more visible so that the team can see what a difference the referrals make. Um, that That is really important and because you want them to know that they're contributing to something that feeds them as mm. well, but feeds those that they work with every single day and makes working in a wonderful environment the more possible. Mm, yeah, I love that. And that's part of the training, isn't it? Like helping people to feel good about asking for a referral. Because when we can really understand that we're all we're really doing in sales, sales is service, sales is helping people. And so who else can we help? You might know some other people that we can help. And that can be a real win-win for your customers who feel great about referring their friends or their family members or colleagues. And it's obviously great for the business to get these much warmer, much more likely to convert, much more profitable sales. And Susie, one of my most favorite client referral strategies of my life that I've, all the clients that I've worked with was uh, a company that did events and they, this was kind of, uh, oh gosh, how long ago would this have been? Maybe more than 10 years ago. They uh, did live events all around the country and uh, would bring speakers and they'd have, you know, hundreds of people at these events, sometimes thousands. They printed up these free tickets to come along to this kind of event that was like the doorway event. It was a, it was a three day event. And the value was really high. It was a three-day high-quality event, but their strategy at the time was to give that away for free to people who had these tickets. And so I could go to an event and be offered the opportunity to take like 20 tickets, right? So let's say ticket zero to ticket 20 are allocated to me. And they had a very, very rudimentary little uh, computer program that looked after this. I would then give those physical tickets out to my friends And they just go online to the link on the ticket and put their ticket number in and redeem the ticket. And that then said, oh, ticket 19 has been redeemed and ticket 0 to 20 are batched to Michelle. So we're going to count ticket 19 as a, uh, a benefit to Michelle. And what would happen is the people who referred got what they called training dollars. So if I referred one person, I might get 100 training dollars. Or if I referred 10 people, I might get, you know, $2,000 2000 training dollars. Now, I could only use those training dollars to go back and buy more training from that company. It wasn't actually money that I got and I couldn't redeem it for cash. So it was kind of ingenious because a lot of people who really wanted to do the training uh, but wanted to find a way, a creative way to pay for the training uh, would go out and promote the event for them and share these tickets around. And it was an incredible strategy. Uh, started with a very simple system. They got slightly more sophisticated as it gained traction, which is what we're saying, don't overinvest to start with. And it absolutely was a cornerstone of their success. They became like a $10 million business. And a lot of it was off the back of this simple customer referral strategy. So I just want to share that one because I've always, I've always loved that strategy. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and do that right now. That might be not the right strategy for you, but they found the thing. They found the motivation that their customers had, which was, I want to pay for this $20,000 certification and um, I've got to get creative to do it. And part of the way I can do it is supplementing it with these training dollars by referring more friends to this event. So it was a really healthy kind of ecosystem where everybody mm. won. Mm. Fun, 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 mm. fun. Yeah. So we've talked a bit about how we can get referrals from our customers. Let's take a look now at how we might get referrals from those referral partners, those people out there um, in the world who maybe aren't our customers, but may be great referral partners for us. And we've got three tips for you around this as well. Mm, We sure do. And this is really thinking at a different level. This is really more leveraged ways to get referrals. And the first tip is to think about who else has your clients. So that could be who has your clients before they do business with you, during or after they work with you, even adjacent to the work that you do. So for example, if you provide accounting services for restaurant owners, that's your niche, who else has restaurant owners as their clients? It could include particular food suppliers or hospitality equipment suppliers or real estate agents who lease commercial properties or staffing agencies that specialize in providing hospitality staff or coffee suppliers. Chances are that you have strong relationships with others who share your client. And so maybe it's someone who's 
already organically sending your referral here or there, but maybe you could formalize it. So if you take a look back at any referrals you've had in the past, what sort of businesses or types of peak clients were they from? And that's a clue that that type of business or client could be a great referral partner for you. Right. So that is an ideal first step. Just think about who already has your clients. And that really leads on to our second tip for making the most of the referral partners that you might have right around you sitting, hiding in plain sight. And that is once you've found a a potential referrer, that coffee supplier or the real estate agent who's leasing those commercial properties, the next thing you want to do is build relationship with them. And this is our, our big tip because these referral arrangements can be incredibly lucrative. I've seen people build six and seven figure businesses on these kinds of arrangements, just getting a nice little bank of referrers, getting a lovely steady stream of fantastically warm leads. And you can be off to the races. And I was just talking with a client yesterday and she provided um, services for women and it was kind of personal development, kind of empowerment services. And she first set up her offices in a building where there were other ancillary women's services there. So simply by making friends with those other business owners and putting herself in the way of those other business owners, she just tapped into this incredible stream of referrals. And she never had to market her services. She had a full book of clients almost from day one, because you can imagine when you first set up your office, even, you know, the the week or two leading up to set up, you're putting your signage up, you might bump into the owners, you, they're asking you what you're doing. Like they might immediately be able to start sending you work. And that really set her up for success right from the start. And the the point is you don't have to go and have physical offices to do that, but tapping into these referral networks, building these relationships can be hugely beneficial. And so you don't want to rush into um, asking them to become a referral partner. Sometimes it's about slowly, slowly kind of win the referral partner over. And what I've found, and Susie, I'm interested in your thoughts on this, but people will typically give you a referral for a few reasons. And sometimes it's even a combination of those reasons. The first reason is they want to solve a problem for their clients that they can't solve. So, you know, in the case of um, the real estate agent looking at, you know, who rents out commercial premises, they might have a client, a restaurateur, who really needs a good accountant in order to be able to lease these premises that the real estate agent has been trying to lease for six months, you know? And so they want, they can't solve that particular problem. Maybe that that restaurateur's got like a tax issue they've got to get resolved before they can sign the lease or whatever. Then you're very motivated to find a great accountant who specializes for rest in the restaurant industry to help them. Now, when it's solving a problem for their clients they can't solve, it's often for a few reasons inside of that one reason. They want to effectively get this problem off their plate in a way that's not a headache for them. So sometimes, you know, um, like for for example, you might have a sort of a, a referral that comes your way that's not really the right referral for you, but you want to look after that referral partner that's coming your way. So you don't just want to say, sorry, I can't help you. It might be really to your advantage to say, look, that's not really what we specialize in, but I've got a great colleague who can look after you and let me just connect you with them now. So it's sort of moving people along and um, not creating headaches for themselves. Best referrers are where the part you play is mission critical. So if, for example, you're um, a business broker, the accountant is going to be mission critical to what the business broker is delivering. And so you're going to get a much um, warmer referral. They're going to be much more motivated to solve that problem for their client and refer to you. So that's the, really the first reason why people might give you a referral, to solve a problem for their clients that they can't solve. The second reason that they might give a referral is to build a, bo- a bond with their customer in the hope of future work. So this is that person that's going above and beyond. And maybe you've been that person in the past for your clients. So, you know, you install pools and you hear when you're talking to them that they're, after the pool's gone in, they really want to um, beautify the space and put in a garden. And you think, oh, 
I'd love to refer you to a gardener. We know a really great gardener. And that's just making yourself super useful um, to that particular client. So when they want to put a spa in, you're the first person that they think of. So it's an idea of building a bond with their customer in the hope of future work. And the third reason that people might refer work to you is they want to get reciprocal referrals back from you. And so one of the best things you can do to kind of really spark up your referral networks uh, is to give people referrals. And then finally, another reason that people may want to refer to you is to make some money to get uh, you know a kickback or a commission or something like that. But I often find that that is not one of the main reasons that people are referring. In a few kind of industries here and there, that might be sort of the common, the norm. But in general, I find it's one of those other three reasons that gets people motivated to make referrals. So you need to find out, like I was saying, even with our customers, when it comes to our business referral partners, those others out there that could be referring their clients to us, you want to find out what is motivating them. What is it that they need? And you want to start slow and really build that relationship. Mm, Thanks for that, Michelle. Um, I hope you're taking notes. (laughs) If you're out on the road, you're listening to us at the gym, you might want to circle back to this one because there's lots and lots of goodness in it. This leads us to our third tip for getting referrals from referral partners, and that's to stay present in their world. So that means, again, having a system for reaching out from time to time. You know, maybe you'll come across an interesting article and send it across and say, hey, you know what, I saw this and I thought of you. Or noticing that they've just been nominated or won an award and sending them a note to congratulate them. Or sharing some of your news or catching up for coffee if that's even possible if you're in the same area or making sure you invite them to your events or your conferences or something that you're doing. So the main thing is to stay in relationship because otherwise, you know, inside her business, we have something we call the connection scale. The more connected you are, the less transactional you are, the more likely that you're going to have these long-term relationships where you'll keep getting referrals. So it won't just be a one-off thing. Um, You might have a referral you can send them. That's a great way to get the ball rolling on a referral arrangement. I'll just say on that as well is that if you are starting to refer, don't have it be conditional. I'll refer you if you refer me. I would really be generous uh, with your referrals if you want to get the ball rolling. And when they do refer, make sure you really treat those referrals well, like we mentioned at the top of the show. We do a really great job with that first referral and don't rely on your mutual customer to give that feedback to the person who referred them. You want to share that information back to your referral partner. So whether that's an update, sharing the progress they've made, a thank you note, as we said earlier, some sort of gratitude. Yeah. And on that point about just staying in touch with people, Susie, you are particularly great at that. I, you know, I notice uh, somebody puts a book out and you will write and congratulate them on the book, or you will, um, you know, note how successful their event looked or how much you enjoyed their video that they posted or whatever it is. And, Mm. you know, we're not, it's always sincere. We're never kind of fabricating that, but it's good just to be you know, follow those people on social media, Um, keep an eye on what they're doing, subscribe to their email list so that you can put yourself in the way of the things they're doing and give yourself reasons to reach out. I've always thought you've done a great job with with that particular um, strategy. Yeah. Now, um, more formal referral arrangements can come from these early beginnings, but I think you're kind of picking up what we're putting down by now, which is, you know, start organically, start generously, start without expectations, start without too many bells and whistles. And then as you gain momentum, you'll have a lot more insight into what the right structured solution is, whether that's a technological solution, some automation, whether it's actual a formal agreement with a particular referral partner who's you know, it's really kind of strategically makes sense to put something more kind of formal in place. But the main thing is to get started informally and see how the process goes, how many referrals you're getting. You know, you might think, oh my gosh, this is going to be the best referral arrangement ever and it's crickets or how mutually beneficial it is. Maybe um, they're not the right kind of clients for you. You're getting a ton of referrals, but it's actually a drain on you because you're having to field all these leads that really aren't quite right. But if it is a real fit, if it is really fantastic, if there is all this mutual benefit, then you could look at formalizing it. You might then agree to, um, you know, 
maybe even do some kind of financial benefit or have some sort of uh, agreement in place or exclusivity or things like that. But mostly I find the really successful referrals that I've had, that I know many of my clients have had, has been on a more informal basis. And so I've seen many informal referral arrangements that happily produce immense value, six, seven figure value for everyone involved for years without any formal arrangements at all. And When you do that upfront work of establishing the relationship and you get those flow of referrals going, it's the gift that just keeps on giving. So where might your ideal referral partners be hanging out? Um, You know, there are the places you know right now, uh, but there might be places you haven't thought of yet. So you want to do some research. You want to go and do some outreach, put yourself in the way of where your referral partners might be. So there might be some people that are springing to mind right now and you think, oh, I should ring them for a coffee or I should send them a note or I'm you know, going to catch up with them. But then there's a whole bunch of people out there you don't know that you want to put yourself in the way of. And that might be a, a conference. That might be an online community. It might be an industry event. You might ask others in the know. You know, even family and friends, it's surprising how they just happen to know, you know, that six degrees of separation. They might know somebody who could be a perfect customer referral or a great referral partner for you? Mm, Absolutely. I hope that you are taking copious notes. (laughs) Um, One thing I do want to say is that we've mentioned the Her Business Network a couple of times, and I just know that one of the benefits of being part of the Her Business Network is that there are women inside there who are building sustainable, profitable six and seven figure businesses, working with other members. And one of our members, Karen Parrish, she recently published that 95% of her web design business comes from referrals, which is fantastic, right? That really speaks to how great Karen is at taking care of her clients. And I know that a great portion of those comes from other members of the Her Business Network. So she's created websites for dozens and dozens and dozens of women inside of our network across all sorts of industries. Um, And Amy Lee of Heart content. She has a small marketing agency. And in one 12-month period, 50% of her referrals came from her business members and the people that they referred. And Lauren Bartley, who has a company called Impactivate, and they help people with digital marketing, Facebook ads. She's done 84000 at last count, which was a few months ago, $84,718 in business from members referring work her way. So joining a network like the Her Business Network offers an amazing return on your investment. And if you're not already a member of the Her Business Network, we're going to include a link in today's show notes, or you can head on over to herbusinessnetwork.com. And all kinds of businesses are getting referrals, not just businesses that, you know, help people with Facebook ads or help people to design website. There's anything from people helping people to lose weight or to be, you know, get rid of back pain or to um, do the plans for their house or to improve their voice because they're podcasters or um, with menopause support or fashion advice or fertility treatment because we're a community of like-minded women, but we're across so many businesses. And so um, whether you need, you know, someone to help install solar in your house or you need someone to, you know, clean the pool, likely someone's going to be connected to someone inside the Her Business Network. And so you don't have to go trawling or Googling. You can just ask a trusted community and get a trusted referral. And so just a few referral partners or a handful of customers advocates can be such a game changer for you. And so we've given you six different ways, three for your existing clients, three for referral partners. And just to recap, you want to be active around seeking referrals. And today we looked at um, those two different categories. And just to recap them when it comes to referrals from customers, the first tip is to actually ask, right? To actually ask for the referral and to really build that into a system so that it's not forgotten or it's not ad hoc. The second is to add the referral suggestion and relevant link to your email footers, to your website, to your monthly reports or your status updates or your newsletter. And the third tip is to reward and incentivize your client-facing team to get more referrals. And Michelle, you wanted to recap um, the referral partners tips, I know. Yeah, I just think it's great to kind of uh, recap. I loved hearing hearing those three tips again from you and just consolidating this. And as you're hearing us recap these tips, just think, what is at least one of these that I might do that I can just start the ball rolling on? So there's a couple of ideas for getting referrals from customers. In the three ideas we talked about getting 
referrals from referral partners were first, think about who has your clients. And as Susie said, before, during, or after, or even adjacent to the service that you deliver. And we gave you a few ideas and a few ways to think about that. Second, it's all about building relationship then, realizing that just one great referral partner can be the source for a ton of new leads and clients for you. So it's really worth it to invest in and cultivate those relationships. And our third tip is staying present and top of mind, finding ways to keep in touch and stay in touch and share what you're doing and maintain that connection. So when they do get a client who needs what you do, you're the first person they think of. Mm, Thank you, Michelle. So I hope that we've got you thinking deeply on what you could be doing now to get more referrals. Um, In just a few minutes, we're going to share a link that you can go to to get any resources that we've mentioned on today's show. But first, I we do love to share these episodes with as many business owners as possible. So we would love it if you would leave a rating or review over on Apple Podcasts. That's the big daddy of podcasts. And we have over 100 five-star reviews. If you enjoyed today's episode, we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review over there as well. Now, one of our listeners is the lovely Christy Lee Bellet of People Powered Business. She's also a member of our Marketing Success Mastermind program. And she was listening to episode 204 from a few weeks back. And that episode was called The Perils of overthinking and underdoing. Now, a little bit about Christy Lee's business. She helps business owners grow their businesses by harnessing the power of their people. And she does this through her specialized HR solutions and her people-powered HR membership. So Christy Lee said this, which I thought was quite funny. She said, after listening to the latest and as always perfectly timed content sales podcast episode on my morning walk, about not overthinking. So she was listening to the episode about not overthinking. The irony of the fact, I'm standing here thinking about a new offer. She said the, uh, that it's not lost on her that she was overthinking. So anyone else have a favorite thinking place? She asked. So thank you, Crystal Lee. Thank you for listening. Sorry you were overthinking, but hey, you're in good company. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, thank you so much for listening and thank you for that review of episode 204. And that's definitely a good one to listen to, especially if you find yourself procrastinating and getting stuck because you're overthinking, um, go ahead and have a listen. There's now 219 episodes of the show for you to soak up and enjoy. So anything we mentioned here on the show can be found in today's show notes, and we're going to put them over on our website at herbusiness.com forward slash get referrals. That's herbusiness.com forward slash get referrals. Now, Michelle, what have we got coming up in the next episode? We've got something coming up in the next episode that just about every expert on content marketing talks about. It's a bit of a chestnut, but we've not really dug deeply into it in its own dedicated episode, and that is how to repurpose content. Now, we're not going to take the same old, same old routes. We've got some great ideas to help you do more with less because it's not about creating reams of content. You know, one of the central tenets of this show is no content without conversion. So it's about creating the right content and leveraging that content so you can really maximize the results for your business, the reach and the impact of that content. So we're going to be covering some ways you can repurpose your content Mm. to maximize your conversion, to maximize the number of customers you're getting without burning out, without doing 50 million things. And we're covering that in our next show. Mm, And I'm looking forward to that because we can be spinning our wheels, creating more and more content when likely there's enough gold in what you already have. So that's coming up two weeks from now. And um, so if you don't already subscribe to the show, go ahead and subscribe wherever you're listening and we'll be back with a brand new episode very, very soon. Thank you so much for listening today. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go? I just want to reiterate that great point you made right at the start, Susie, and that is ask for the referral. (laughs) And let us know how you go. We'll see you next time right here on the Content Sales Podcast. Bye for now.